from Absolutely Productions. This is Branchburg with Brendan and Corey. Jackie Sullivan has a tight schedule, and ShopRite's helping her stick to it without cutting corners. Her day starts with the freshest milk, Black Bear premium deli sandwiches for lunch, even a freshly roasted chicken for dinner, all at ShopRite's low prices. This week at ShopRite, you'll find big savings on Turkey Hill ice cream. Just $1.99 with your Price Plus Club card. And delicious whole ripe watermelons are only $2.99 with your Price Plus Club card. Attention, ShopRite of Branchburg customers. My name is Carl Hepburn, and... Uh... I'm the newly appointed assistant manager here at ShopRite. The uh, reason I'm speaking to you today is uh, I've just spoken to a Price Plus card member celebrating a very special day. If we can get everyone to join me in wishing Denise in aisle seven a very happy birthday. Come on, that's not everyone. That's better. Now, uh, if the whole store can just walk towards that corner of the supermarket, deli section, you too, just keep your tickets. Um, they'll all still honor them. Aisle 7, everyone. Uh, is everyone there? Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. She was in aisle seven when I talked to her. Where the heck did she go? Did one of you guys check out a short woman, reddish hair? What cars are stuck? No one can leave the aisle. Oh, okay, oh good, okay. Um, guys, don't move. You're just gonna shake the shelves and knock the items over. Oh boy. Everyone just calm down. We'll get the shopping cart guys inside to figure this out. Oh, there's Denise. Knew she was there. Happy birthday, Denise! Trevor, are you able to see what's happening in aisle 7? Do you get a birthday cake while everyone's still there? Try to start the cloud again? My parents had sent me to ShopRite to buy a loaf of bread to have with dinner. This is something they do from time to time, as they like to have a few minutes every day when I am not around the house, expressing all the various opinions and rants that come into my head. This is fine with me, as I actually get to eat some of the bread. It's a real win-win for all parties involved. In fact, you could even say it's a win-win-win, as ShopRite gets to receive money when I purchase bread. I made a perfect right turn into ShopRite and parked my 2010 Toyota Camry with relative ease. Then I took off my seatbelt, got out of my car, and took my personal grocery cart out of my trunk. Most people do not own a grocery cart, but I do. A few months ago, I decided it would be worth it to purchase my own shopping cart. I believe that this would not only save time, but also prevent me from getting into my frequent arguments with the men who put the grocery carts away. After about 10 minutes, I was finally able to finagle the cart out of my trunk, and my trip to ShopRite had officially begun. But as I pushed my cart through the parking lot, I noticed a man sitting in his car with a real sour look on his face. What's going on? My girlfriend makes me wait in the car because the jazz music they play over the PA system always puts me in the mood. I tried wearing headphones, I tried wearing airplanes. I walked away, figuring it was best not to further engage with the man. At the end of the day, I am simply a 25-year-old, 6-foot-1 man who respects the grocery store. So once inside, I find myself in deep awe 
In fact, I typically will find myself quite overwhelmed, and I've been known to pass out roughly 40% of the time I enter a grocery store. And it happened this time as well, almost instantly. Thankfully, ShopRite employees know to just let me be when this happens. If I am woken up or touched, I will begin to scream, and cannot be calmed down easily, or even at all. It's just far easier to let me re-enter consciousness on my own. So there I stood in the lobby of ShopRite, slumped over and unconscious on my shopping cart that I brought from home. My fellow customers respectfully avoided me, and soon enough, I burst awake. I wildly tore off the blanket that a good Samaritan had draped over me, and a nearby child applauded, thinking it was a magic trick. I thanked him. I then realized I was not doing the best for time. I decided to get a move on and make what can only be described as a beeline for the bread display. I moved my shopping cart at top speed, as I imagined a bee would, and was going far faster than any of my fellow shoppers were going. I allowed my mind to wander, and thought to myself, I'd actually love to spend a day as a bee. It seems like quite a nice life. You get to fly around, you get to have a stinger, and you get to do something with honey. You just can't ask for much more, if you ask me. I then discovered myself becoming jealous, and very angry. There I was at the bread display, out of breath and pissed off. But before I could get carried away with my bee fantasy, I noticed that something was seriously wrong with the display. Instead of being a testament to the power of bread, a showcase for ShopRite's finest bread products, the display was completely empty. Not a single breadcrumb in sight. The breadcrumb part was fine by me since I didn't want a breadcrumb. No, what disturbed me most was the lack of full bread loaves. It was like the Great Depression, or another time when there was no bread. A nearby woman was staring at the empty display and crying, but it turned out she was crying about something else. The average customer would probably give up at this point, or at most, knock a couple items off of nearby shelves out of anger. But I am not like most customers. In fact, I am very different from most customers. Sure, I treated myself to knocking a couple boxes of cereal off a nearby shelf, but what I did after was truly incredible. I made a second beeline to the back of the store, where the extra bread is located. I used to work at ShopRite, so I know my way around, but I don't think anyone here remembers me anymore. Since I last worked here, I've gotten a haircut. I actually once wore my old name tag to ShopRite while picking up bread, just to see if anyone would recognize me. My old manager walked right up to me, and she asked me to stock shelves. I felt remembered at first, but then realized I wasn't a shelf stalker when I worked here. I told her this, but she said, if you want to get out of here by 8, you better get started. I hope I don't see her again. Once in the back of the store, I ignored the oafish whines of employees asking if I was supposed to be there, and headed straight for the closet that I remembered containing bread. I opened it with glee. And there it was, the most beautiful thing I could have imagined at that moment. Extra bread. But before I could realize what was happening, the closet door shut with what sounded like human force, and I soon found myself locked in from the outside. As the closed door echoed in the closet, it dawned on me that my family would have no bread to have with dinner and no son to enjoy dinner with. I was scared and in panic, I began eating a lot of the nearby bread. My incredible cell phone unfortunately had no service in the closet, so I started to scream. But my screaming, although very loud, was of no use, as my mouth was completely full of bread. At one point, my old manager walked by. I began banging on the small window, but all she did was bang back. Soon enough, I had grown tired from all the bread I'd eaten and fell asleep. Twelve hours later, a janitor unlocked the door during his morning rounds and told me to get the hell out of the store. I thanked him and walked away. I left the store breadless, took 15 minutes finagling my shopping cart into my trunk, and finally went home. I'd missed dinner by about 14 hours.
Well, this is it. Tilled this land for four decades. This is the first season trap right will sell my produce. I remember when this is all fields. For a nice play ball out here. One time a man made an emergency landing. Single engine plane. I think it was a Cessna. Then he ran straight into the woods. I think he became mayor a few years later. Or hmm, maybe he just died. I was never that good with faces. But I don't feel like I'm giving in to the man, per se. I gotta admit, ShopRite is unrivaled in both efficiency and variety. Yeah, at least compared to my fruit stand off Route 28, which got hit by a drunk driver. The man ate four baskets of peaches before the cops shot him. All over the news. So, actually kind of, kind of ShopRite to take all my business after that. Even if it was just grapes. Oh God, seagulls. What are you doing here? On the farm, crows are typically the nuisance bird. I can't say I know much about seagulls, so holy shit. That's right, they eat all those baby sea turtles. Now I wonder if you put a scarecrow on the beach if that helped those little hatchlings. I always thought lifeguards were supposed to be like scarecrows. Oh well. Never send a human to do a scarecrow's job. Now where the hell's the front door? Well, these are my grapes. I could recognize them anywhere. When you work with the unpredictability of nature, there's something emotional about seeing your produce neatly ordered. Their plastic container dividing them by equal weight. The synchronized sprays of the overhead misting valve. Like soldiers, clean and decorated after a war. The struggle is washed away. The story is only half there. While other people taste their sweetness, their fight stays with me. Uh, excuse me. Hi. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to get through. I can go around. No, if... not a problem. What do you think of my grapes? Oh, um, you know, I wasn't... They're not on my list today. I'm just trying to get oranges. Ah, oranges. Those are from a Callahan's orchard, off Route 41. Uh, oh, okay. Play ball together. We lost a nine in 72. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. It's not my eye. It's McCallahan's eye off Route 41. He seemed nice. Shame he didn't buy any grapes, though. Oh, well. His loss. There hasn't been a buyer yet, but it's good I'm here keeping watch anyways. Step on a grape at a fruit stand, it's really no big deal. It's just squished. But if you do it on the cold, hard tile of a shoprite warehouse, you can slip and die. Crack your skull right open. I can't imagine if one of my grapes did that. I'd probably never sell a grape again. Move out of town. Go into the fur trade. Shave my head. This has got me down. I can't have customers see me like this. Especially next to such a beautiful yield. I'd better take a walk. Clear my head. What the whole aisle of birthday cards? They bought orange juice and eggs in the same aisle just to make room for a whole aisle of birthday cards? Oh, hi there. Hey, uh, again. Are you celebrating your birthday soon? No, I'm just cutting through the aisle. I'm about to go check out. Exactly. What? No, I'm cutting through the aisle. I'm I remember when they used this place to store planes. Where'd your oranges go? At ShopRite, kids are always throwing tantrums over what they want. And there's another one, right near the vinegar. I think they feed off each other, always working together, like bumblebees. Hmm. Come to think of it, never had a child throw a tantrum for my crops when I was working at the fruit stand. Nope, that hasn't happened to me, nor will it. Yeah, I'd grab them by their scruff. Well, back to home base. Wait, where are my grapes? They were just here. Uh, I didn't hear any tantrums. Uh, oh, there they are, over the, oh, what the? Manager special, 40% off? What a slap in the face. Now I know why children cry at Chopra. Hey, get the hell out of 
out of my way. People didn't like I was breathing on the grapes, so they marked them down. I told them, what do you think I was doing before they got the shop right? And that's when they threw them all away. I suppose that's the risk you take when dealing with big business. Father always warned me about this. Handshake's not worth spit anymore. You gotta carry two things on you. Gold and a knife. How I miss him. Maybe this is the first experience that'll make me wise like him. God, I hope so. You get that? My foot is stuck under the garage door again. Honey! I'm stuck. Hi, Honey. this is Mark and Ellen Troutman. Uh, we are not here right now at the phone, but please leave your name, number, and a message, and we will get back to you as soon as we can. Hello, this is ShopRite Pharmacy. This is your final reminder before we incinerate your prescription. Oh, no! If you do not arrive within the next hour, your medicine will be burned by one of our pharmacists. No! No, please don't burn my medicine! Your medicine is taking up too much space, and we have no choice but to burn it. Honey! First, we will try matches. Honey! But if that doesn't work, we will put it in our microwave on high Why are they doing minutes. this again? If the microwave fails, we will then try our industrial furnace. Oh, God. My doctor is going to be so pissed. The furnace is our last resort. Oh, and it's at I don't want... Celsius. It will be no, burned. don't do that! Why are they going to do that? Where is she? In most FDA she has work? Oh, why don't I listen to her? Honey! I don't listen to her. I don't listen to my doctor. I don't pay attention when the garage door is closing. My foot's stuck. Honey! You will need to pick up the ashes. Thanks, and have a good day. She must have had work. They're gonna burn my eye medicine. They're gonna burn my eye medicine. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to This is Branchburg with Brendan and Corey. They'll be glad you did.